Hey guys, in this brief video I'm going to compare a more powerful version of the home analog TV transmitter to this little guy I showed in a couple earlier videos. So right now I'm broadcasting 192.25 to this Admiral that I'm almost done restoring. And the one thing I've noticed is this. Where I stand has a dramatic effect on it. In fact, I get the best if I squat two feet in front of the set. The humbars almost completely disappear and uh, the picture looks pretty good. But it works great. Now I have done very little in terms of optimizing my antenna setup and all that, which I'm sure would help. And uh, seems like uh, you really start getting vertical roll rolling badly too. When I, yeah. So I'm just I'm moving around a little bit and uh, the, it's having trouble. It's having trouble. So let's try the more powerful version. I, I suspect. I expect the core functionality is identical. I think it uses the same firmware, chipset, whatever, just has a more powerful output amp. And somewhat contradictory inside, this is the sort of English version, uh, contradictory versus what it actually says on it. So on this piece of paper, it says 0 0.7 to 2.5, whereas on the cabinet, I think it says 1 to 4 watts. And it says, if you apply 12 volts, you get 0 0.7 to 1.5. And if you apply 24 volts, you 1.5 to 2.5. And they uh, go through it, and they, they actually recommend you keep it at 12 volts. Now, the transmit frequency I talked about earlier. This was designed for the Chinese standards which are different from the U.S. channel frequency assignments. Uh, in particular, the U.S. NTSC uh, system had 6 megahertz between channels. This has 8. We're just lucky that channels 9, 10 are close enough to this that it works. Now, full disclosure, on this set, I did center the, the fine-tuning control, and then I tweaked the local oscillator slug. So I can't guarantee that on uh, any TV you'll be able to get a good video and sound if you don't have access to be able to make that kind of adjustment. Uh, I need to try this on more sets, especially a more modern solid state set that doesn't have uh, the ability to make tweaks like that. So this is what it looks like. So bigger, nicer, comes in a case. Say so it says 1.1 to 4 watts on the front. So who knows what it's actually going to put out. And notice the... <laughs> so I was going to the, the the badly labeled controls here. So I was puzzled what uh, Emon went. And then I realized, oh, it's just menu misspelled. And then add and cot. Same on this. That's plus minus, essentially. And whereas this has a slider switch for power down here this has a uh, two buttons okay and this toggles between HDMI and AV on the back we've got the good old classic uh, trio of left right audio and video just like this guy here and you can do HDMI now it's also as AV out because one of the other things this can do forget about the transmitter it can convert HDMI to composite video so that's what you can get out of that. Which is a little bit different on this guy, because on this guy, if you go into AV out mode, it uses these same jacks for the output. It looks like this has a dedicated AV out mode. Oh, and there's an on-off switch on the back. Well then what does the power plus minus on the front do? <laughs> I'm guessing they both do power. Well, let's find out. So what else did we get in here? Uh, we've got an antenna, a little bit nicer than this guy, it's longer and has a nice BNC to swivel on it, and I believe we have a power adapter in here. So let's uh, break all this out and set it up 
I'll try to do the same frequency of 192.25. Okay, now with this little guy, I was just using a phone charger, going to the USB-C connector on it. Uh, this has a wall wart, so this might be uh, a linear supply, so one thing I'm curious about is will those bars be less noticeable. Uh, let's hit the uh, switch on the back. What the heck? It's kind of gummy. All right, yeah, so it looks, well, interesting refresh rate. <laughs> I'm curious to see how the video turns out because it's definitely flickering in the viewfinder. All right, so let's see if the menu works the same way. Yep, hold it down for a while and it starts flashing. And we're going to go to VHF and PN, PAL versus NTSC. We want N. Do it one more and there's a frequency of 85.25. And then we get 168. So you only get one option in the channel in the lower VHF band. And it's not exactly right for any US type station. So yeah, it has exactly the same frequency options. I figured it would. So let's do 19225 again. And then we gotta change our sound IF from 6.5 to 4.5. And it says 12.5 in the bottom, but that does not seem to be something that I can change. I just jump right back to VHF. So yeah, I don't know what that is. Oh, this is power output power level. That's long. Out of menu change mode. There we go. Okay. And of course, the power goes down when you push the plus, and the power goes up when you hit the minus. Assuming that's what that means. At any rate, it looks like we're at the highest, 13.5. Let's. And. Interesting. Why do we have. Well, I guess we have no signal. Well, what's on? Oh, maybe. Um. Yeah, how do I switch between HDMI and composite inputs? Huh. Let me, uh, try to read my way through this. Click HD switch the MIAV button to HDMI mode and vertical bar should appear in the TV. Okay, well we got that. Is there a button on the back? No. Yeah, so this one has a slide switch to go between these modes. How do you do it on this guy? Oh. Oh, duh. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, slightly different. Ah. And it sure looks to me, well, one, it works. And yeah, as I move around, well, I was going to say as I move around, it's not having as big an impact, but yeah, it's got the similar problems. If I go over here, it rolls. Over here, it stops. I'd have to uh, try going to another part of the house and fire up a TV to see uh, if the range is better. But this actually looks a little bit worse. 
Now it might be the signal's too strong. Uh, so let me try decreasing the power level. See if it gets any better. So when I use the other one and squat it down in front of the side, it looked great. This does not look great. We got some weird streaking going through it. Can we see what Starfleet All right, I'm on the lowest output level now. Sound is fine, but the video is definitely suffering. So it's a number in the bottom right, it's at zero right now. So if we do minus, it starts going up. It honestly doesn't change a whole lot. If you get really down to zero, yeah, it gets bad, but when you're between five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, it's not changing a whole lot. But I gotta say, overall, the quality is better with the uh, lower power, cheaper one. No, yeah, I could try a different power adapter, something that's, uh, you know, maybe it has a switch mode supply in that wall wart. I don't know. But, yeah, it does work, and as far as range, I'd need to get, like, a little portable TV or something and start walking away, but uh, I'm not looking <laughs> to uh, broadcast that strongly anyways because there is no legal power level that's valid in this frequency band so i want to keep the power as low as possible so honestly if i had to recommend one of these unless you really need more range i think the less expensive one uh, actually works a little bit better but you don't get the case um you gotta supply your own power pack eh. It made me realize that I was using him as a safety net, you know, as a way to avoid becoming involved with someone else. This sound quality is fantastic. <laughs> That's right. Speaking of sound quality, they do make an FM only transmitter version of this, and it has a rechargeable battery built into it, and I've heard good things about that. So, I said for now, I'll talk about these in more depth in uh, an upcoming series and I have some other gizmos to try out as well including this guy which I completely forgot I had which was all the rage about a year ago but I don't see it for sale anywhere anymore but maybe it's the forerunner of this and unless there's no controls it actually comes with a little remote control but uh, I believe uh, it's similar except this does not have um, composite input compatibility, but it has a USB port, and I think you might be able to put content on that, which is an interesting option. So, you know, there are there are other options out there. So is what I'm getting at. And this is just a uh, HDMI to composite converter. It doesn't have an RF modulator or uh, uh, output amp. So I'm curious if any of uh, you guys out there have one of these and have played around with it and what your thoughts are. Uh, but as far as the frequencies, they're exactly the same between these two. And they're not, none of them are exactly right for the United States, unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, it, it works. Uh, and perhaps if I played more around with my cable dressing and my power source and the antenna length, it would get better. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.